Hello and welcome to the best beginner pentatonic scale lesson ever. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. I spent a lot of time myself wandering through the landscape of what scale do I play to sound better? How do I become a better improviser on guitar or improviser in general? So for those of you that don't know, I started at eight years old playing on the violin. And so on the violin, it was a lot of reading sheet music and playing scales for the sake of learning how to play the violin in tune. Because on the violin, you don't have these frets. You have to be very careful with your finger placement. So when I first got to the guitar, it was, it was very weird for me to learn pentatonic scales. I would just play them up and down. So I was never really able to explore my creativity with a scale. So what I'm hoping for is that I get to save you all time and I can give you the shortcut to learning how to use this scale creatively instead of just treating it like an exercise. So let's get right into it. So what is a pentatonic scale? So today we're gonna to look at the minor pentatonic scale and we're gonna start it on the fifth fret of the sixth string. So this is gonna make it the A minor pentatonic scale. The one thing to understand about scales on the guitar is that they're all shape based. Everything's visual and that's what makes a guitar easy in, in a respect is that you can you can visualize things very easily and things like chord diagrams and scale diagrams are are nice and easy to look at so the five notes in the a minor pentatonic scale are a c d e and g so when we play those five notes they sound like this and we would play a again to sort of complete the scale and we could go back down if we wanted to so there's our A minor pentatonic scale. Now that's just one octave. Most everybody teaches the scale, the first one for most guitar teachers, they teach it to their students, and it goes in two octaves and then a couple more notes and it'll sound like this. So now we've gone over all six strings and then here's the full diagram of the scale right there. So first thing right away, we can see that we have some patterns we can look at to just sort of visualize this scale and not think of the note names or anything, but just how can we remember some shapes so that the scale stays in our memory. So the first thing that I see, you know, your, your first finger is only in charge of fret five on, e on every string. Your first finger has to play fret five, right? So those, those notes right there. So that's pretty easy to memorize. So now realize when you're playing up through the scale, you have two options of what to do on a string. You can either play one first finger and fourth finger, or you're gonna play first finger and third finger. So what I like to tell my students is I like to tell them, you know, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, right? So right in the middle of all that scale shape, you have one, three that happens three times in a row right here. So you can remember that little nugget area of, of one three fingering. And then on the outside, you have one four, one four, one four. So that's just one way I sort of conceptualize it. I try to show my students that, hey, listen, you have this little section of, of like one three, and then the one fours happen on the outside. So now the way I just demonstrated it with my pinky like this, one four, one three, one three, one three, one four, one four. That's a great way to play the scale. And I encourage you as a beginner to practice it that way so you get some pinky exercise. In a lot of my earlier videos, I talk about how important it is to exercise that pinky. And a lot of guitar players and violinists and cellists and people, they, they ignore their pinky practice. So while you practice one four with the pinky and then one three, one four, one four, you can also practice it this way, one, three. Now that's a big stretch. You're stretching from fret five to fret eight with first finger to third finger. Now this finger pattern is gonna be useful for when you want to move the shape into a different key. So right now we're in the, it's the key of A minor, the A minor pentatonic scale. And so we can, if we move it anywhere else, we're changing the name of this scale, right? We're not changing that it's minor pentatonic, that stays the same, but we will change the name if we move it somewhere. So a popular place to move it is up to the 12th fret. Now, if you're using a guitar that doesn't have this cutaway, the 12th fret can be a pain to play on. That's why I'm starting it on the fifth fret today, because no matter what kind of guitar you have, the fifth fret is pretty achievable, unless you are super brand new, in which case, you might have a little bit of trouble stretching 
your fingers from that distance, skipping two frets, but just just practice it. You know, don't don't stress yourself out too much. You have to try it a few times every day for your hand to start getting used to that stretch. So if we move it up to the 12th fret, then you're going to be using this one three fingering a lot. So now this is the E minor pentatonic, right? So we don't have to think about that too much, but just realize there's always multiple fingerings for scales and riffs and everything. And it's, it's certain things are going to be a little easier, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really up to what feels good to you and what feels musically convincing to you. So here's the biggest mistake that guitar players will make when they're playing the pentatonic scale. The biggest mistake they make and what the biggest mistake I made is doing this. Always just going up and down and up and down the scales. Now don't get me wrong, when you're first starting this scale out, you want to play it up and down and you want to just figure out you're still figuring out the shape of it. You're making sure you can consistently play all the notes correctly in a row, and it's perfectly good. But you're gonna be surprised at how quickly you pick up this shape and how quickly it becomes easy for you. So the hard part about any, any skill, really, any musical instrument especially, is that you want to always maintain a level of challenge. You don't wanna just fall into the, the normalcy of, of playing the same thing up and down and it's super easy and you're on autopilot. So here are some ways you can create some challenge for yourself when you're practicing the pentatonic scale. The first one is practicing it in groups of three. So since we are all beginners here, we're gonna start, we're gonna just all down pick this. So just all down picking like this. So instead of just going up the scale like this, we're gonna do groups of three. So it's gonna look like this. And then we can do that on the way down as well. Now, if that's too fast for you, obviously you want to take it at a slower speed. So get out a metronome, maybe start it at 60, something nice and slow. See if you can keep up with that. After you try it slowly, try it a little bit faster, maybe five clicks. Uh, try it a little bit faster after that. Slowly build up that speed and try to conquer this new pattern. Another pattern we can do is going four notes at a time like this. That four note pattern, that's pretty tricky for me. I haven't practiced that one too much. So make sure that you work that into your practice routine and you're going to see your understanding of this pentatonic scale is just going to be so far and beyond what my understanding was when I was trying to figure it out. So let's recap, guys. We have the A minor pentatonic scale. And here's the shape right there. This scale gets used all over the place. It gets used in rock music and pop music, jazz music, blues music, especially blues and variations with this scale you start to build the blues scale with the scale it's it's found in the natural minor scale all these other scales that you'll learn later on in your development you want to make sure that you're not just practicing the scale up and down once you have the scale under your fingers you know up and down that's easy for you if you find yourself on autopilot move into that three note pattern and then even try the four note pattern always want to maintain a level of challenge so that you're always growing yourself as a musician, growing yourself as a guitarist. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I know that this is some information I would have loved to have had while I was learning the guitar. Um, so I hope this stuff really helps you out. If this video helped you out in any way, please hit that subscribe button so then you can stay up to date with all the other videos and lessons I'm going to be posting in the future. If you found this video helpful, you're not sure what to do next, check out this video right here because YouTube thinks that you might enjoy that one for my channel. So guys, that's all I have for now. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.